Okay, hi, welcome to the next in the series of uh, recordings associated with my Robust Tools class. This time around we're going to do a series of uh, videos that are associated with how to make generative art in R. So I thought I'd you know, start this one with just showing you the, back, the desktop background to my, uh, uh, my laptop, which was created in R. This is a generative art um, program that I've uh, written and I'll talk about later in this series. Of course, it being something that you're doing for a university education, at least if you're in the class, um, we will discuss a bunch of new R concepts as we go. Okay, let's get this underway. So what we're talking about uh, today, um, I think of it as the, ah, there we go, um, the programming of art. So very often you see people write books called like the art of programming. This is kind of the other way around. We're going to talk about how to program up art and maybe we'll accidentally learn some programming skills in the process. So what I'm going to do in this very first uh, video is essentially talk my way through the process of creating a, a generative art system that I'm going to call Scroll. So it's not the one that draws the um, the fancy background thing on my computer, but it, it draws things that look a little bit like the the backdrop to this um, to this slide, which I kind of like because it's kind of like a um, it, it, it looks like my hand-drawn scroll, so let's have a go at it. We're going to go through quite a few uh, you know, uh, concepts, uh, new R concepts as we go. Um, here's a big list of them, I'll come back to that at the end of this. Uh, but for now, let's just get up and running. So, we've got our, the, our usual approach is to do this in our Studio Cloud, so I will um, click on the, the pretty link and it should take me over to our Studio Cloud. It's doing this in the background and it's going to take a little bit of time to get things up and running. The, you know, and that's, there we go. Excellent. Okay, so as you can see, this is a completely blank um, uh, our Studio project. I haven't done anything to this yet, uh, so we're going to start from scratch. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to have to do, because if I want to draw uh, some nice pretty pictures for you to see. Um, actually, what I will do before even doing that is embiggening... Ah, that's too big. Okay. Uh, things so that this is easier uh, for you to read. Okay. So, the first thing I want to do is, because my face is taking up the bottom quadrant, I'm just going to go over here to our RStudio uh, project options, or global options, sorry. And we're going to... I will, out of habit, say no, don't... Uh, restore the .r data file, never uh, try to save. Um, I'll apply that change while I'm here, but the real reason I'm here is to change the pane layout so that we can have the files at the top and the plots at the top. Um, that's the main thing I care about as far as this one goes, so I'll click OK and um, so I'm not so worried about uh, help viewer or anything like that. The main thing is that these are our project files. So I'll do this so that we've got a bit of room to see. And uh, there we go. So we've got just our RStudio project. So now that you can see what I'm doing, let's get up and running. So imagine I'm going to create the system called Scroll. Um, well, the thing that I'll uh, want to do uh, is have this in an R file, so we've got one open already, which is great. And if I just go in here, I might as well go save it. And I'm just going to call this scroll. Uh, am I? Please go there. Now I'm going to call it scroll. R. Okay. And there we go. Now it's been created. Okay, so this is a completely blank. Um, uh, ask for your project. So we're going to need packages. So I'm just going to create a section of my code. So it's always nice to do things in section. That's Control Shift R to bring up the insert section thing. And I'm going to write something called preliminaries. Now, first off, um, so we'll go OK, and this gives me this nice little sectioning thing. And we'll go, um, uh, sorry, library, tidyverse. because we'll almost always want to do things with Tidyverse. We will want to do library 
Ambient is an, a package that I use to do a lot of generative artwork with. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that as I go. Library Psycho, um, which is short for Scientific Colors, which is going to give us some color palettes. And Library, Library, Library here, which is a package which is super helpful for project management. So if I was going to go like this and save it, you can see immediately, oh no, package ambient here and two others are required but not installed. So typically what I would do is write a little script uh, that at least documents this, but I'm going to be lazy and I'm just going to click on this little button here that says install. So it's quite conveniently um, going ahead and installing the things that I need done, um, which are going to be the tidyverse, uh, ambient, psycho and so on. I'll let that um, run. Um, it may actually have been kind enough to do that for me. Let's find out. So control shift F to S to source. Wait. Control shift S to source. Okay, so I think it's still doing it. Okay, we're going to go sh install. Ah, there we, <laughs> there we go. Uh, there's a little progress bar here which is showing me the process. That's what I was looking for. It took me a little while to find it. Um, so while that's going through the tedious process of installing packages, let's start doing some art. So I'll just, you know, try and stick with my habit of actually commenting. So load packages. So anytime you are going to create generative artwork or any kind of art, like there's going to be some kind of description of it, which we'll call the parameters. So I don't know yet what the parameters are going to be. Well, actually I sort of do because I know what this artwork is. Um, but we'll say, so we've got this thing I'm going to call art. Par, short for art parameters, is, and we're going to say it's going to be a list. Now this is a type of data structure that I haven't talked about yet. So I don't know what's going to be in this list, but a list is um, a very a powerful tool for um, combining lots of different objects of different types together. So one thing I do know that I'm going to need, um, because I've created generative art before, is a seed parameter. So I'm just going to say seed equals two. Um, I don't know why two, I like two. Um, and we're going to use this in just a moment to uh, help generate random numbers. After all, if we're going to do uh, generative artwork, we want to be able to have some degree of randomness in there. Okay, so now we've got the packages, great. Um, so now, if I should be able to go, I'll go scroll to R. Okay, um, so we've got our file. If we go Control Shift S to source it, so it's run the scripts. Okay, blah blah blah. Yep, learning tidyverse. It says here, here starts at cloud uh, project. That comes from loading the here package, and what that's saying is that okay, our um, the here package is going to keep track of our project and where it's located. For our Studio Card project, that's easy, um, but uh, cool. So we're ready to go. Okay, so if I go over here to the environment uh, pane, you can see that I've created this art part and it's a list of one. So let's just uh, Control L to clear the screen and have a look at this. So it's printed out art par. And it's got, okay, dollar seed equals two. It's a little, it's less than obvious what uh, what that means. Like if I created a normal variable called like x and set it to two, right, and printed out x, you would see this. So the this part of your output that says, okay, two, it makes sense, right? Um, but what is this dollar seed doing? Well, let's have a go at this. One possibility, and it turns out the correct one, is if I go up par dollar seed is going to extract the seed variable inside the R art par list. And so you can see that art par dollar C is two in the exact the same way that X over here is two, art par is two. So essentially what a list is, is just a bundle of variables. Right? There's a little bit more I can say about it, but 
what I want to want you to recognize at the beginning here that there is a conceptual link between the list that I just created, um, which admittedly only has one thing in it, and the um, um, and the tibbles that we've been creating uh, oh, using read CSV earlier. So that brings us to the next um, thing I want to do. Um, I'm going to guess that, um, like, if I'm going to do some drawing, I want to create a canvas of some kind. And I'm going to need to get this, get my thing set up. So I'm going to go, okay, another section label, and I'm just going to go setting up the um, canvas, I guess. Yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll do. Okay. So if we're going to do random stuff, uh, we are going to need to work with random numbers. If we, But at the same time, we also want our work to be reproducible. So computers have this thing called a, a pseudo-random number generator. In other words, it's something that behaves as if it's random, but actually kind of isn't, sort of. Yeah, I know, that's a little vague. But the point is you can control the kind of randomness you get just by using what's called the set seed function. And so what we'll do is we'll use set seed to say that, um, so I could do something like this, set seed, uh, um, seed equals two, and that would say that you know, we're going to use seed two. Um, but I'll be a bit more general, and I'll say that when I set this up, I'm just going to read it off my user-specified list of parameters. So we go art par dollar seed. Okay, so all that's going to do, if I run that, I'll again control shift s, nothing appears to happen. Literally all I've done is set, set, the random, set up the random number generator in a way that I can control its output. Okay, great. Next up, I want some random numbers. Let's suppose for now what I want is some random numbers that just lie between a given range, let's say 0 and 2. R has a whole bunch of functions to deal with random numbers and I'm bare, I'm only going to touch the, the simplest stuff right now. Let's say I want random numbers that are uniformly distributed with this kind of R unif gives you the random uniformly distributed numbers and then I'll say I want to have 10 of them and we'll say that the minimum value should be 0 and the maximum value should be 2. So this is one way of generating uniformly distributed random numbers. All right, and here you go. So there are some numbers. Um, so we've got a 0.25 over here, 1.4, Whatever. These are random numbers that are always going to be between 0 and 2. And that's going to be the basis of what we uh, want to do. So we're going to need to generate something, some number of random numbers. Hmm, okay. So let's say um, I'm going to say that n equals, uh, let's just call them nrand for now. I'm going to change that later, and I'm going to say, let's just make it 500. I don't know, we're going to have 500 random numbers. Okay, so um, the a list, when you're creating the list, going back up to our part here, has to be a comma-separated set of values. So now I've got that, saving it again, let's go Control shift s If we go here to our part now, what we can see is that it... Art is that it is a, a list that has two variables in it. So up, if I go up par and then go dollar, it gives me two options here. So the seed is two, but I could also, if I wanted to, go n rand, and that says 500. Okay, so I've stored another parameter that I'm going to use when creating my artwork. Cool. All right, so we've done that. Next up, I'm going to need some random numbers to work with, I guess. So let's say, this time around, what I'm going to do, because I was trying to hint to you before that there's a connection between tibbles and lists, let's create a tibble. 
and I'm going to call it state. And what this is going to be is the initial state for our um, our painting, right? So state equals tibble. There's a, there's a function to create tibbles, and then in the same way that I just gave like, inside my list, I just gave the name of the thing I wanted to create and the value that it should be given, um, I can do the same thing to create a tibble. So what I'll say for now is I'm just going to create an x coordinate call and um, we'll say that that will be a random number. So random r unif again. So we're going to just sample random numbers um, and we will say that minimum, sorry we should go the number of random numbers <laughs> Ugh, comes for, we're going to pull that from our parameter, our list of parameters. So we go art par, uh, and we'll grab that in rand. Okay, so that's how many number random numbers we're going to get. And then what I'm going to do is say that again. Let's go minimum equals zero, max equals two, and I'm going to have. I'm just going to go like this. Copy paste and we'll say that the y coordinate for our state is going to be exactly the same. Well not exactly the same, let's check. It's going to be generated using the same random procedure. Okay so we're doing these random numbers. Okay so the thing I wanted to do now is um, run all of this again from scratch. So I'll just clear my uh, environment again and we go so we sourced this and we've created two variables now art par is a list of two and state is a tibble that has 500 observations of two variables okay so state is exactly the kind of thing that we could have read into uh, R using read CSV so let's have a look at it so if I just type in state um, we can see that it's 500 by 2 tibble X is random is it is uh, random. DBL means number, Y is DBL, also numbers. So notice although I used the exact same code to generate R, um, X and Y, right? so this is exactly the same there, we've got different answers because they are randomly generated. Right? Um, we have random things over there. Okay, what I want you to remember though is this. Notice Keep track of these numbers. 370, so if you're a Sydney side of the 370 bus, uh, it takes you from Annandale to uh, you know, to UNSW, um, and some other number, I don't care. Point is, that's what it starts with. If I, just now, I'm just going to grab this section of code, all right, and we'll go and run it again, like that. Oops, ah, okay. And if I just, in the console, go state, Let's have a look at what we've got. That is not the same number, right? Because I've called it again. Okay, let's can clear the screen, clear my variables, and I'm going to run the script again. So we're sourcing it again, and I've done it again. And state, let's have a look, 370 again. We got the exact same number there because at the top of the script, set seed has reset the random number generator here. And so this will always be the exact same set of random numbers that we create. And this is kind of useful. We've got something that behaves like it's random because if I keep doing new things using R unif, um, I get different answers. Again, notice that my X and Y values are not the same as each other. But if I rerun the whole script from scratch, it will give me the exact same thing all over again. That is a really important thing about reproducible code in general. Controlling the seed is a way of ensuring that the random numbers that you're using in your work, be that generative art or data analysis or whatever, um, are that can be reproduced by others. Okay, so we're nearly at the end of this first extremely boring section, but the thing I want to call attention to is that under the hood, so there's state. When I print out state, it looks like that. And when I print out r par, it looks like that. They're actually, they look quite different to each other. But 
Notice that the kind of language or the kind of command I used to write them was terribly similar. And I've hinted to you that they are in fact deeply related data structures. So let's just try a sneaky little trick and go state and go dollar. Oh, look at this. The state tibble contains two variables, x and y. So state dollar x, if I print it out, is, oh god, it's a 500 random numbers, blah, 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 go back up to the top. And, oh, there's our 370 again. Well, technically, 0.36976. So that's our random numbers there. So you can access the variables inside a tibble uh, using that dollar operator. And you can use that dollar operator to access variables inside a list. You can use it to access variables inside a data frame. Dollar, as a general rule, is a tool in R for accessing the contents inside a container object of some kind. Um, and I'm being a little vague about that. But that's the um, the big lesson I want to take away from uh, I want you to take away from that. And I'll stop this video here because we're at about 20 minutes, which is a nice moment to stop. So we've talked just to go back to my um, slides about the first two of these key concepts. So I've talked about lists, tibbles, and the dollar operator, and I've talked a bit about generating uh, pseudo random numbers. So the exercise to take away at the end of this one is write this part of the script yourself. So create your own project, create the scroll file, and play around with these, um, these concepts a little bit. And I'll see you back for the next one. And we stop.